All right. A lot of the projects in my class start from polylines that are set at elevations, otherwise considered contours. So in this case here, if we look at this, we can see this is just a polyline. We check out its properties. We see it has an elevation. All of the nodes along this polyline are what the machine is going to use to create the tin from. So in this case here, anywhere there's a square node, it's going to connect back and forth and make the tin among all the nodes in this line. We do have a few issues in situations like this where we have a whole bunch of squares here and they're going to project back and forth on the same line before trying to get to one above their elevation. This would be considered a flat spot. We have a couple of ways to address flat spots. Some we can put in a single point here, a control point of some sort, or in this case I guess that's more of a spot elevation, and that would cause it to dip down on that particular point. Instead of making this whole area flat across here, it would have a dip. And the same for a situation like this over here. Instead of it going across between these two guys, it would have a little bit of elevation change here. So, let's see how we put all these together to make a nice surface. I've already made a surface in this drawing, just called it Surface 1, for lack of a better name, because we're not really using it. Um, if I were to be using it, I'd give it a name. Always give it a name. Um, we would like to define this thing here with the contours, in this case polylines. So I'm going to say add. I always like to give this a name all. That way I kind of know what I'm doing. In here we see that there's a couple of factors that are being addressed. Weeding factors. So remember when I clicked on one of these lines here? I can't because I'm inside of a command. But um, the distance between those points or the angle between those points, if it's lower than these, it will weed them out. This opposite is the same for supplementing factors. If there's not a point within 100 feet, it's going to weed them out. And if the mid-ordinate distance, so there's no real curves in here. These are actually just a bunch of polylines to make it look like a curve. If there was a curve, the mid-ordinate distance would look at ones below one degree. This is what I was talking about. This minimize flat areas. Right here, it's going to try and fill in the gaps in the contour data by basically adding its own kind of mystery points. I'll show you that in the tin in a moment. And uh, swapping edges is basically like an old LAN desktop tool that we used to use, where you can like turn the way the contour is sitting or turn the way the triangle is triangulating. So instead of it going between these two points here, it's going to try and turn it between here. But in this case here, a lot of these automatic tools do a really good job. And what it's going to do is, anywhere it says adding points for flat edges, this means it's going to try and add a few points that we don't have that it made up for us. And I'll highlight those in a moment as well. At this point, say OK. What I've done is, um, now I can pick any of my contours. In this case here, I'm going to pick everything. I turned these into lines so they didn't get picked when I did that selection. This is a piece of text. That's a block. So doing this, I pick all those contours. I can hit enter. And seeing as I don't have a style assigned to my surface, nothing fascinating happened. So let's go up here to surface, set the surface properties. Oh, background is gray, just like that. You can't see. Let's put this to one in five design. That'll be a better choice. All right, now I say OK. Now, you can see that we've got a pretty good set of contours. At least the contours are looking pretty decent. You can see they're kind of following what we got. It's kind of odd that it's off by that much. Usually it's closer than that. Eh. Anyways, the scale of it's pretty tiny. But here's a good point to, good, good thing to look at. Check this out. This particular polyline, actually if we look at it, it looks like a polyline that kind of touches itself and bounces around. It doesn't. It actually is a loop. <laughs> so if I pull these two apart, that makes more of a loop. There we go. Not again, not the best, but something. Since I did move the lines that are supporting the surface, my surface has gone out of date. Let's go here and rebuild this. Now we can see it kind of matches a little bit better. Not too bad. One of the reasons that there's a distance, a gap here, if I look at this line and I pull up the properties on it, we can see that its elevation is 481.0036. So that's that slight difference of 036, 0036. 
otherwise because this contour is sitting right at 4481. Um, but what I really want to look at is this. Let's highlight the surface. Right click, go to surface properties. We're going to put one on with some triangles, contours and triangles. Say OK. I'm going to get rid of my properties dialog. And because my contours and triangles all match, everything's gray. Not the best, but that's all right. Still can look at the point. If I go in here and highlight a few of my polylines, and highlights my tin, I'm going to hold down Shift and take out my tin. Now, this is what I wanted to point out. Here's a good example. So right here, you can see here's a point, here's a point, here's a point. So it made a nice triangle, made a nice triangle, made a pretty good triangle. But what did it triangulate to here? So from this point all the way through to here, it's kind of guessing. So when it, well not guessing, it's making an educated guess based on the fact that these points are coming down. But um, what it did is those are the points that it added for us. So we don't have the same amount of control over those. So if we were to swap an edge on something, we'd only be able to swap the edge between, well, we'd swap this edge here, this edge here, but we couldn't change this edge here. It just doesn't work. But it makes everything look a little bit nicer. So if I change this back to our 1 and 5 design, we can see everything looks pretty good. And if you want to see what it would look like, without having those on there. If we go and look at our surface, we can see it's defined with some contours. And the one edit it did to itself was minimize flat areas, trying to fill in these gaps. If we want to see what it looks like without it, we can right click here, delete those minimized, say OK, rebuild our surface again, and watch all of our little points in here. Rebuild the surface again. Now this was the last point that it could actually connect and then when it got out here it couldn't see how to make that point there because it was going to connect to itself so it just said whatever and made it flat. So if you look over this drawing here we can see that there's more flat areas involved. If we'd like to add it back we can always click back on edits, go down here to minimize flat areas, get the same selection that we had when we first made the surface, we'll say OK. And now we see most of our surfaces fill in, not too shabby. Interestingly enough, I'm not sure where this guy's sitting. He didn't get added to my list. But his elevation is 478. Let's see if people are, let's see if our surface is tinning to him. Alright, we'll check out properties, we'll check out doo -doo -doo. contours and triangles. Oh, well, sure enough, he's got a couple of points, and you can see that. Well, let me take turn this off. There we go. Deselect that. Yeah, all of his little points are being added. He must just be a flat spot. So let's just for fun, let's add this guy. Actually, let's add both of them. Both of the spot elevations. We'll leave the tin on because we can actually see a change. Let's go over here to drawing object. This is a block like I mentioned before. If we go in here and look at the properties, it's a block reference. I'm going to go here and add a drawing object. In this case here, I'm going to say, let's say spot one. And it is a block. Say OK. Go in here, add spot one. It found one. And I can see it just made a little tiny dent in that right there. Nothing too fantastic. And then just for kicks, let's do the same over here. Add a block of spot two. We'll add this guy, and this one should be, I don't know, a little more. Yeah, there we go. You can see that it brought more points together, triangulated up on this point. Let's see what our contours look like. Let's go back to here. Go back to contours and design. There we go. Eh, didn't really change anything, but now if we were to put a line across here and I made sure to cut across my point, click on this line, check out a quick profile of it. I have one surface. I'm going to go here and pick major grids. Better double check it real quick and make sure that the exaggeration isn't insane. It is. 10 is pretty big. 
Say OK, say OK. We'll click up here to see it. Sure enough, let's see where we're at. We can see that this point here, oops, turn that off. We can see that this point here is actually right here at the end of this. So if I bring them out, yeah, it dips a little bit, but it doesn't really change the day too much. But if it, if it was at the top of a hill, in some cases, you'll get spot elevations at the top of hills and stuff. That should improve that as well. This guy must be the same as this. That's why it's not printing. Or not printing, but not being collected in the tin. Well, actually, he's in the tin. He's just not showing as a contour. Yeah. All right. We'll get rid of that. All right. There you go. That's the basics of putting polylines into a surface. Bye.